Hello YouTube, this is Alex. I've been meaning to do this video for a little while. Um, this is a tutorial on a DIY practice lock. Um, you can get practice locks online for what I think is usurious amounts of money, but you also might want to um, you know, set up your own practice lock with something a little more exciting. This happens to be one of the quick set locks that came with the uh, Bosnian Bill <clears throat> um, traveling now, lock. I partially kit. disassembled it just to save time. Um, so what I did was I removed the circlip from the back. We know we all love circlips. So here's the circlip, and I removed this little cover. Now this is actually a pretty nice one that has this cover that kind of snaps on and off. Some of them you'll find have like this brass thing you've got to pry out. Some of them don't even have a removable thing and you'd have to maybe drill it or file the top off. Um, but we'd like to be able to maybe change the pins in our lock without having to get out the plug follower and do all that kind of nasty stuff. Or we may just want to change one or two pins um, to play around with different, you know, up down kind of kind of things, high lows. Um, so here's here's how to set it up. Make yourself a little um, pin tray. Um, this is a, a very sophisticated one made out of a piece of Xerox paper that I doubled over the long way and uh, then folded uh, into about half inch little peaks. Um, very, very sophisticated. Um, and now what we will do is, there's the lock. Now, next thing you need is a tap. Okay, so I'm going to take my tap and I'll start with number five and simply very gently get it started and then once it's sort of going you want to just turn very gently if it binds at all just back it up a little bit and go again okay and then I'm just gonna run this down you know far enough that was probably about three-eighths of an inch or so and then just pop it back out. Okay, now I'm gonna repeat that process for these other ones and I'll come back in a second. Okay, so that took about uh, two minutes and I now have my, uh, the, all the bits of the Bible tapped. So you can see the threads there. Okay, since I have an existing key, I'm going to set up the uh, pinning so that it matches my key. And to do that, I have this little gauge, which came with my pinning kit. You can get these pretty cheap online. They come in plastic, metal, whatever. Um, but you can see here that there is a, um, a section on here marked Quick Set. And this is extremely complicated to use. We're going to just decode this key. What you do is you hold the, hold the thing up like this, take the key, get it pretty square. You start it on this side and you slide it over until it won't slide over anymore, which tells you what the depth of cut is. And I'm gonna call that a, that looks like a four. Okay, let's see if I can get a good shot of that in there. Oops, it's hard to, hard to do with one hand. There we go. So you can see it's flush, and it's do, 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 and it's at number four. See the little four there. So I have four, two, four, five, four. Okay, what does that mean? Well, these are these keys are cut to code. So what we do, we go over here. I happen to have a pinning kit. Now you don't have to buy a pinning kit. Um, I got this on eBay for about I don't know, sixty bucks. They can be very expensive. Um, but uh, you can get one. You can get one on eBay. You can get a smaller one for specific locks, um, or you can um, even just go to the store and buy 
uh, sets of pins for different kinds of locks um, or just collect them <laughs> um, and set it up the way you want. But if you happen to have one of these, um, they usually come with, or you can find online, a chart which tells you how to set up the thing. So we've, we've determined that the code is 42454. So if I were making a key, this would be the depth of cut that I would use. So I'd, I'd measure from the bottom of the key to here and cut as far as it says to uh, down until the depth is whatever it says to do. Um, I have the code number and then I have bottom pin or what you might call key pin, right? So I need a four, and that is a two four zero. So I come down to my um, pins. There's a two four zero bottom. Okay. So, and this is my pin one. So you could use tweezers, but you can also use your deft fingers. Put that in there. Okay. Stick the key in, and that's a perfect fit. Okay, you're pretty darn close. Okay. So I'm going to repeat that for the other pens and get that get the plug set up, and then we'll come back in a minute. Okay, so I've got my my plug all pinned up. Uh, that looks pretty good. Okay, there's the, the key in there. Looks good. We've got a nice nice. Now we're on the home stretch. Up. Gets pretty easy from here. So I'll be right back. So I've already got the key pins in, so that's sorted. Um, now on my chart, it said that the top pin is always a 180. So all the top pins are the same size. Um, I'm going to make a little change, and that is I want to make this lock a little bit more challenging for the next person that gets the Bosnian bill set. So I'm going to put a couple spools in. My kit happens to come with spools. You can buy the spools in, um, uh, on their own, or you can collect them from other locks that you take apart and that sort of thing. Um, so here is, if I can pick it up, here is a spool, zooming, it should make a nice backdrop. So you can see that's a spool, nothing special. And it's about 180. Um, I don't think a few thousandths of an inch are gonna make a huge difference here. You just don't want something that's really too long or it'll jam the lock up. So I'm gonna even put my tweezers away. I'm gonna stick the spools in just some, a few locations. Okay. Spool number one, I'll stick one in the, maybe the front, this, this one I do need the tweezer. Stick one in the front position. Okay, there he goes, down in there. Um, maybe one in the back. Okay, you typically want to have one non-spool. You can put a serrated in or just a regular pin. Um, but those spools were symmetrical, so the top and bottom of them were the same. Uh, length on this particular kit. I just want to show you one thing. Um, here is a, a much longer spool, um, and you'll see that the the spooly bit is towards the end, and then it's got a bunch of extra unspooled part here. If you wanted this to actually work properly as a spool, you want to put the the spool part facing down so that it can catch in the keyway or catch in the shear line. If you put it in the other way, nothing interesting is going to happen. And now I'm just going to take the original top pins uh, that came with the lock um, and put put those in positions. Screw that. Positions two and three. Okay, and I now have my lock. Um, I don't like that one. Uh, I'm gonna put that in here. Okay. So, got everybody sorted. There we go. Okay, now, at this point, before I go put the springs and everything in, I just want to sort of do a quick check to make sure that the, um, that everything still works. Okay, so there's the, I've got the key pins in, there's the key, everything's turning, nothing's jamming on me, so that looks good. Take the key back out without popping the plug out, Bill. Um, and I'll okay. just that locked up. Oh. Next step, as you might imagine, is to reinstall the springs, which we will now do. Now we grab our um, set screws, or grub screws, for those of you in um, Britain. And I think I cleverly didn't grab the right Allen wrench, so I'm not even going to use a tool. I'm going to use one of my picks. Um, and I'll just start with this position. And all I need to do is snug it down to the point where it, I may not even need a tool to do this. I just need to snug it down to where it's not going to flop out. I don't want to super tighten it, okay? 
because it'll it'll um, you know squash everything too much and the lock may not function properly. Okay, I've got all my little set screws installed. In this particular lock, I had to back them out slightly um, because I was getting a little bit too much spring tension. That means I could either back this, I could either cut the springs down or um, potentially use shorter grub screws, but um, those will hold just fine. In a mortise cylinder, you got plenty of room, and so it would be a lot easier. So we shove the key in, key's working. Great, very carefully remove the key because I actually fuck it why don't we just put the circle that doesn't want the index and then we'll just give him a little squeeze to seat him in there so I did use one more tool um, but you probably have a set of pliers laying around um, in your house if you don't well you should so and now my locks all pinned up now from this point on um, I don't need to have a follower or any other Fancy tools. If you need tweezers, um, what a C2 mate, uh, you know. Uh, steal one from your wife, they work just fine. Um, just don't let her see you doing that. Um, as my wife growls at me. And that's it. You now have a practice cylinder that you can use, and you can make it as hard or as easy as you want. And you can rekey it, repin it at your heart's DIY content. DIY practice lock. Um, Euro cylinders, highly recommended because they're a bitch to take apart. Um, <clears throat> you can get the uh, get the Bible either drilled out or, or taken apart. And uh, and that's it. So I hope this helps some people. It's certainly good for newbies and even uh, those of us who have been doing this a little while, it's kind of a cool thing to have on hand. So thanks for watching. This is Alex. Have fun and please keep it legal. Cheers.